This film shows a 1936 Alice Chalmers W.M. Hoff bucket loader digging trenches at Pearl Harbor, Hawaii in 1942. According to the Frank G. Hoff Company Handbook, the idea of moving bulk materials in large quantities by means of hydraulic mobile equipment was conceived by Mr. Hoff in 1920. At the time, the first mobile loaders were crude forklifts that used some form of cable winch to raise and lower the bucket. These loaders were attached to the front of wheel tractors of the day, notably Fordson, Case, and McCormick. Hoff's first loader attachments were also not true hydraulic machines, but hybrids that used cables to operate the bucket, but with a hydraulic cylinder operating a set of multiplying sheaves. Essentially, a hydraulic cylinder located between the mast frame side rails raised a pair of cable-threaded sheaves that in turn raised the bucket end of the loader arms, which were attached to the cable's ends. This arrangement of cable sheave allowed the relatively short stroke of the cylinder to be converted into a higher lift. The bucket attached to the boom was dumped by pressing a latch using a manual pull rope. This Hoff design was not perfect, but still compared favorably with designs of other manufacturers. Using the same mast frame design, the Frank G. Hoff Company produced its first heavy loader in 1936. The device was designed for the Alice Chalmers Model M Crawler Tractor. The Alice Chalmers Model M Crawler Tractor appeared in 1932. It had the same engine as the Model U Wheel Tractor and was not large in size. This proved to be a good fit for forestry operations and most Midwestern farms, and it became a popular tractor, with nearly 15,000 sold by the time production ceased in 1942. Gasoline was the standard fuel, but a low-compression kerosene version was an option. Started on gasoline and switched over when warm, engine displacement was increased in 1936 from 301 to 318 cubic inches. A four-speed transmission was provided. A starter, lights, and a cover were optional. For the tractor loader, engineers modified this machine with longer tracks, stronger rollers, and a foot clutch, renaming it the WM in this configuration. The longer tracks improved the operating balance, eliminated the need for load-stealing counterweights, and increased traction. Flat track shoes made steering easier, allowing the tractor to turn faster and with less braking. New heavy guards for truck roller and sprocket helped protect them from mud and extended the life of the tracks and track assembly. The loader piston rod was made from a hollow, seamless steel tube and would not bend even under heavy shock loads. Scores of successful contractors proved that this high-speed machine could load more than 30 to 40 yards of clay, dirt, sand, gravel, etc. per hour at a lower cost per yard than other loaders. In addition, the WM and Hoff loaders could not only load, but even to dig basements, a task previously the exclusive province of stick excavators and dragline diggers. And since this story concerns the time of World War II, it is appropriate to mention the contribution of engineer Hoff and his company to the war effort of the United States. From 1942 to 1945, the company developed material for the war effort. Hoff produced hydraulic gun elevating equipment and built a small, compact and heavy-duty loader for the Case Model SI tractor called the Airborne Loader, used to build or repair small airstrips after being parachuted in. Hoff sweepers mounted on Ford Mototug tractors kept aircraft carriers' decks clear. An independent register article noted that Hoff was awarded the Army Navy in 1943, with an additional three stars added later, for continued excellence in the production of war equipment. At the war's end, Hoff made it his policy to hire only returning GIs and to pay them a nickel more than the going wage. With over 90% of the employees having served in the war, the state of Illinois acknowledged the company with an award for this outstanding practice. <laughs>